Yo, yo, yo. What's up, everybody? Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Our music quit playing. I'm sorry. I don't know, dude. Music player, Steam music player is just so flippin' weird about some of these, uh... Sometimes it's like, cool, man, I'll work right. And then other times it's like, yo, I don't feel like, uh, being nice today. You know? Uh, it's also already rando mode time. So... Looking for that NOM emote, you know what I mean? Get those in there. What's up, guys? Good morning. Um, it's Friday, baby. It's Friday. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You did it. You did it, chat. It's Friday. Congratulations. The weekend is upon us. And uh, we have day 33 of Breath of the Wild in front of us. Uh, do we do not have very many side quests left? Really, that's all we've been trying to get taken care of now is the uh, side quests for the game and uh, pushing in game. So, next uh, few days, this will be taken care of, and we're right on schedule. Yeah, uh, feeling pretty good. Schedule command in chat. Right, if you want to take a look at what's going on, we got the uh, the forest will be coming up next. Uh, this has been a nice playthrough, a lot of fun, and uh, we'll keep enjoying it until it's over. I'm not rushing it, but, uh, you know, we've been in it for a while. It, it is going to feel nice to get into something a bit new and fresh, uh, but this is, has been a very good game overall, and uh, I've found some things that I could nitpick on, and because uh, I do that. I'm a, I'm a I'm a critical game player. Uh, I look for things that uh, I think that devs could have overlooked, even in very very good games. Games that I personally would rate very very high. I always try to find things that I think could still have done uh, been done a bit better, right? So uh, this is one of those games where really things that I found ultimately are pretty nitpicky. It was a pretty solid title, man. Uh, pretty good stuff, and uh, I don't know. We'll keep enjoying it until uh, till we finish it up here. But uh, that's the plan for today. Another day. This will be day 33 of us playing Breath of the Wild. But first, we will do what we do, and we will get into the video gaming news segment for today, which is January 13th. Cool. Let's get into it. First of all, that's what we're listening to this morning. Bullets per minute soundtrack, good stuff, fun soundtrack, fun game, amazing game. If you uh, are into rhythm-based games, this is a rhythm-based first-person shooter roguelike game. Um, so check it out, it's fun stuff, and the soundtrack's really dope. It's good stuff. Check it out. Go ahead and uh, cut it. Thanks, Maestro. And. Uh, Let's get into the uh, video gaming news. Let's go. Um, yeah, we should probably just go ahead and talk about the free games. Uh, Epic Games has turned over their free games. So uh, every week, right, that is what happens. They've got Divine Knockout. Now, I think Divine Knockout is a free-to-play game anyways. So I think this is a bit of a promotional thing, if I'm not wrong. Let me look at this article real quick. Yeah, so Divine Knockout was actually given away as a free PlayStation Plus game in December when it uh, fully launched. Uh, but they're not exclusive to any one platform. However, and along with the other games, it's yours to keep now for free. Yeah, so there you go. It was free. It was just not free on Epic. It was free on PlayStation Store, yeah. So um, there you go. Gotten uh, Divine Knockout. This was kind of a last-minute free title that was thrown in here for everybody. Uh, we knew that First Class Trouble, this was the first one that was announced. Uh, then Game Deck came soon after. 
And uh, Divine Knockout wasn't really announced as a free game title coming this week until right at the last minute there. But these are the free games that you can get right now on Epic's uh, platform, Epic Games. So go get your free games. I don't know of any good reason why you shouldn't. They're free. All right. Cool. Cool, cool, cool. See what else we can find here. Let's get a bit of coffee. A bit of that Java. Ah, oh, very nice, very nice. Ubisoft is reportedly eyeing up an acquisition by another. The games giant is rumored to be actively pursuing acquisition. <laughs> Yo, you know what's really funny about this? I literally called this out yesterday in, in yesterday's news segment. Yesterday's news segment, we uh, came across... Um, an article that highlighted uh, some continued issues that Ubisoft is having with another delay, uh, a delay, delay for uh, Skull and Bones, which is like their sixth delay, I think, over the past four to five years, something like that. And um, a number of cancellations for games. Um, they have lost a lot of money recently, profit-wise. Um, it's uh, We hit a big in-depth article yesterday. I mean, go look at it in our, our news segment from yesterday, January 12th, if you're interested. It's uh, a highlight uh, highlighted video here on the Twitch channel. It's also a VOD on our YouTube channel, okay? And what's funny is at the end of talking about that, or that article, whenever we uh, finished reading about it yesterday... I literally said Ubisoft is a company that has had some issues over the past few years. And they have they were a company last year that was noted to be one of uh, a number of large companies that could potentially get bought out uh, due to a number of factors. And then, bam, here we go this morning. Uh, and we've got an article actually confirming uh, what I was trying to convey yesterday on that front. Look, I am fairly knowledgeable about what's going on in this industry. About video games, I know what I'm talking about sometimes, right? Am I a bit three-head sometimes? Yes. But that's just good content. I do know what I'm talking about, people. This is what we hit on yesterday about Ubisoft. So we'll read all about this. Uh, we'll take a look at the whole uh, reportedly eyeing up acquisition. Yep. Yeah. Uh, Ubisoft has lost their way, man. That's what the big thing there is. Um, much to the same, excuse me, <clears throat> much to the same, you know, if you saw what uh, some of the other notable organizations that uh, developers that got were in talks to potentially get bought out last year were like Square Enix, EA, and Ubisoft. Those were the big three. And uh, because you can't really consider somebody like Activision Blizzard in there, they're already in the process of being uh, acquired by Microsoft, potentially, right? Um <clears throat> <clears throat> excuse me, but you take a look and, and uh, Square Square actually sold off their North American studios. They sold off IPs. That's the big thing that you're getting there, right? That's what you got to take a look at here. Is, uh, a lot of these companies, you think about a company like Embracer Group that's been going in and buying a lot of other big studios. Uh, it's not necessarily as much about these development studios at least it's not totally about that a big part of what these acquisitions are, are the IPs that come along with it right Embracer got the uh, 
IPs for Thief, Deus Ex, Tomb Raider. Those are notable IPs they got last year for really in what in the gaming industry would be considered pocket change for these uh, North American development studios they bought out from under Square, you know? Hello, sir. What's up, dude? And um, there's no, you can't, you can't deny the fact that Ubisoft is a developer that while U Ubisoft is uh, having some, some, there's some internal stuff going on there that doesn't seem good. They have lost their way a bit. Um, they uh, are enduring some strife internally with their development processes and things like that. Um, a big part of what people will be buying if they acquire Ubisoft are IPs. You're talking about Tom Clancy stuff. You're talking about Assassin's Creed is the the big, big, big one to note there, Assassin's Creed. Um, there are uh, Far Cry. There are a lot of notable IPs that a developer will be acquiring if they purchase Ubi, right? So that's the big deal there. What's up, man? How you doing, Wick? Google and NVIDIA expressed concerns to FTC, FTC about Microsoft. Interesting. That's Bloomberg. We won't be able to read that there. Let's read it right here. Game luster. Let's do what we do, man. Uh, yeah. 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 I was waiting for you uh, to say that. You're a little bit late, but I'll take it over not getting it at all. You know what I mean? Brother, did you play any more football last night? Because you were looking tilted. My dude, <laughs> you were looking tilted, bro. <laughs> I, dude, I just saw you were live and I was about to like go hop in bed, which, dude, I slept terribly last night. Holy crap. I slept terribly, dude. Tossing and turning all night long, man. I think until about like two in the morning, I finally started getting a little bit of rest. You won those? Yeah. Played two more games and won those? Cool. <laughs> got whooped on by a Jameis Winston led Packers team, dude. That's funny. Yo, we'll have to let Bizen King know that. He'll uh he'll revel in that. He'll like that. Bizen King's a Packers fan, dude. He'll like that, you know. Yeah. That's funny, dude. Well, GG's on the other wins, man. Sorry I wasn't able to hang out. Uh, really, I thought I was going to sleep, dude. And then I went and just like tossed and turned in bed all night. It was terrible. I'm tired today, man. It's not usually like me. I usually sleep pretty well. So I'm going to be a dragon boy today. I'm going to be dragging a little bit. Oh, yeah, dude. I mean, I, 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 you know, I need to. I always wish I could stop by. Uh, you know, I have so many uh, friends that stream late, you know, evening time. And, and, uh, I don't get stopped by nearly as often as I wish I could, you know? Yeah. I know that dude. I know that. I know. I just wish I could, I could, uh, get into your, you know, yours and, and everybody else's stream more often, man, in the evenings. So sorry, man. Uh, Oh, 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 Wizards of the Coast cancels Dungeons and Dragons new OGO. Yeah, they canceled it. <laughs> yeah, dude, they were getting wrecked about this. They were getting wrecked about this. Okay, yeah, yeah. Um, interesting. Okay. That's why it's called Madden. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Dude, I used to play a ton of Madden back in the day. Late 2000s. Late 2000s, dude. I I love I was all about some Madden. But it's another one of those titles, dude, that I saw all, all I saw EA doing was re like slapping a new year on the same thing every year. I was like, this is crap, dude. It's like if a new console came out, yeah, they would like update the graphics and stuff a little bit. Maybe uh there might be 
something new, but quite often that's all it ever looked like to me. Yeah, it's just recycled. Yeah. Yeah. When it seems like there could be such an amazing thing done with so many of the sports games nowadays, and they don't they don't really care. You know, they just it just seems like that's all they do. And then I got into the NHL stuff, and then they they destroyed the NHL game, in my opinion, and I quit playing that. And I was like, I am so flipping done with EA, dude. You know. So. But I used to play a ton of Madden. My thing was always, like, the, the career mode, dude. I just liked playing, like, the single-player career mode. I was all about that, like, that role-playing experience of, of, like, having a character. You know what I mean? And just going through seasons, dude. And just... Uh, compiling stats and and uh, you know, trying to get better and and things like that. Uh, I always thought that was a lot of fun. I never was about the same thing with NHL. Same thing with the NHL games, dude. Uh, I always before I would ever like every time the NHL games came out, dude. That's the first thing I would do. I would play no multiplayer, dude, until uh, I I would actually go into a campaign like a season campaign. And I would play a custom character campaign first. And I would get through at least a season or two with uh, with my character uh, before I would ever go in and play any multiplayer stuff. But that's all I would play afterwards. I would just play club, dude, all the time, NHL club, dude. And uh, then they, they ended up ruining that. What was the last NHL game I bought? 2015, I think? 2014, 2015? And they just started really, really, really... Terror. And dude, the, what's crazy to me is NHL is so much fun, and and NHL as as little love as as uh, the sports games get year to year from EA, it feels like NHL has always gotten the cold shoulder over the other ones. You know, it's so terrible. I hate it, man. Is this a Game Boy inspired what? A Game Boy player inspired GameCube controller. What? Dude, NHL could be so flipping good. That's what sucks about these like these uh these rights that uh EA has with these leagues to where it's basically EA is the only company that can create these kinds of games with those licenses. You know what I mean? Um, it's terrible because I guarantee you, man, there are some companies out there, some developers that could do a phenomenal job with like NHL and, and, uh, NFL stuff. And, um, you just don't see it, man, because EA has got these really restrictive licenses that don't allow people to really or other developers to get into that, uh, that market, you know, that genre sucks. That's crazy. Take a look at that real quick. That's pretty cool. Good old EA, dude. Gotta love them. EA, it's in your credit card. <laughs> Uh, PS5 update will include Discord support, cloud streaming. Cool. Let's take a look. <laughs> Bro, I'm going to be so out of it today. I'm so tired, dude. <laughs> Yo, okay. What's up? How are you? Good morning. Good morning. Happy Friday. Happy Friday. Weekend is upon you. Yes. The weekend. The weekend. You're working, you're working today, but then uh, weekend, right? Weekend, weekend. Yo, uh, people might be having some Mondays off too, yeah? <laughs> we got Martin Luther King uh, Jr. Day coming up Monday, right? Is that right? Correct me if I'm wrong. Um, yeah, Monday, January 16th, baby. Uh, so some people might be getting off for that day, uh, Monday, the 16th. Yeah. Yep. Um, ultimately, 
Only have Saturdays off on the weekend? Yeah! What the crap, dude? Yo, tell your boss I said that's... UNACCEPTABLE! Alright. And that OA approves you to have three-day weekends moving forward and to still get paid full-time. It'll be fine. It'll be fine. They'll understand. Oh, I mean, is it at least, I mean, are, are you still glad that you took the position? Is it overall better for you? Or is it making you feel just beat up? this sometimes I'm glad sometimes I'm not oh that's tough dude I'm sorry that's tough sorry Kay let's take a quick peek at this a new cloud gaming platform potentially in development okay I hope it I hope it uh starts turning around for you a little bit how long have you been how long uh have you been in this new job Dude, okay, me either. I didn't sleep for crap last night. I was literally in Wix stream and I was like, yo, I just want to stop by and say, hey, I'm going to bed. I tossed and turned all flipping night long. I don't think I went to sleep. I, I don't think I actually fell into any kind of uh, deep sleep until about two in the morning. Basically a week. Okay, okay. Well, uh, hopefully as you've had a little bit more time to acclimate into this new career environment and everything, it'll feel a little bit better, you know, I hope so anyways, dude, I'm right there with you though. I'm going to have a, it's going to be a, it's going to be a bit of a rough day for me. <laughs> I did not get very much sleep last night at all. Oh, a month. That's still not very long. That's still not very long. Yeah. But is this, you're only getting one day off a week? Is that what the play is here? Forever, ever in this career, you're only getting one day off a week? Or are you getting two days off a week, but they're just like split or something? What's going on? They're split. Okay. Oh, God, that's... That makes those days feel like they go really fast. But sometimes it's nice because you get one of those days off during the week and it allows you to get things done that you can't normally get done on the weekend sometimes. So that's like a, a win-lose almost, <laughs> you know, because <laughs> not having a days off in conjunction makes those days off feel like they're done like that, man. You have three days off next week? Oh, sick. Is it because of the holiday or just because gaming giant Sega advert reveals planning Mario and Sonic release for Paris 2024 okay we'll take a peek Yo, uh, Wick, I think I'm growing my beard out, dude. And, uh, you know, I was like, Wick's got a nice beard right now. I'll grow mine out too because I'm a little bit jealous. But you're going to need to go ahead and grow your hair out, okay, Wick? You're going to need to grow that hair out, brother. <laughs> okay? Because we do these things together. You hear me? New Xbox Game Pass tier could release sooner than expected. We've heard some stuff about this being in the works. Um, look, they they're supposed to be rolling out the family plan stuff. It's already been in a beta testing phase in like Ireland and Colombia, I think. Uh, the family plan for Game Pass, but this is probably talking about 
some uh, Game Pass tier stuff that includes ads at a lower price point, stuff like that. But we'll take a look, okay? Oh, PS Plus adding first PS1 games of 2023 soon, okay? Oh, GOG has quietly killed off its Steam import service. Look, GOG is actually a fantastic platform. One of the things, there's two things that I love about GOG. First and foremost, it's DRM free, uh, meaning that it doesn't require you to connect to their servers to verify that you, uh, you know, own the licenses to the games from their platforms before you're able to play them. Uh, so if you have games on GOG's platform, as long as you've installed, downloaded them and installed them, you can play them without an internet connection. Um, as long as they're not like an actual live service type of game that requires an internet connection. You know what I'm saying? But um, one of the other things that's really good about GOG is that they have the ability uh, to connect to many, many, many different platforms to import your library, which is a really nice one-stop shop platform for you to pull up on PC and just look at uh, the majority of your library in one place rather than have like five or six platforms open at once on your PC and go, what games do I have here? What games do I have here? What games do I have on this one? We, uh, okay, now pull up the fourth one. What do I have here? You know, you can look at almost all of your, your games on GOG if you link up those and, and sync up those um, those other platforms into GOG. That's interesting. They killed off Steams. I wonder why. This is what I'm talking about. Marvel Games Boss discusses possibility of more mature rated games. I talk about this a lot with um, certain characters and universes uh, in like the comic book realm, things like that, where um, it feels so bad whenever a character, uh, we find out they're doing like an adaptation uh, of a character for a movie or a TV show, or they're cr creating a, a character's world, a character into a video game that's throughout its history been known as a kind of gnarly character, a uh, pretty mature in its text based form. And um, then it, it gets contorted into this kind of uh, e uh, teen friendly, even into more of a youth friendly um, portrayal of these characters in these universes just to cater to a younger audience. It's really, it, dude, it is a huge turnoff for me. I actually hate it. Um, there are just, I understand why it happens and it's fine with, um, an amount of stuff, but there are certain characters it shouldn't happen to, which is why I'm so glad that, uh, the movies, for instance, for, uh, for, yo, Ghost Reaper, what's up, buddy? Hey, uh, like, like the movies for like Deadpool, right? They did those movies right. Deadpool's gnarly. Uh, it's very, uh, adult humor as well. And uh, they did those movies aimed at a mature audience, which is what they should have done. I'm so glad they didn't try to cater to a young audience with the, uh, that character, you know, in that world. And it's a, just such a huge turnoff for me to see, uh, for instance, like a character like Venom, dude. You know, I get it. Spider-Man is the other side of that. Uh, you know, uh, the, the big other tie-in is Spider-Man and Spider-Man is, is a very, you know, lovable character for a lot of younger, uh, individuals, but then they bring Venom out and Venom is traditionally a kind of gnarly character and they, they do these standalone movies and uh, were they entertaining, uh, to an extent, but those movies could have been so cool, man. They could have done such a great job with those movies. Uh, had they just not worried about catering 
to a young audience. If they had just been like, let's make these a gnarly experience uh, based on what this character has traditionally been, you know? Um, and that's what I want to see with like, you know, we got new spawn stuff coming out, things like that. Um, it, not that every character in every universe needs to be mature, right? Obviously. But uh, there are certain characters and universes that should stick close to what they've always been. You know, they're, they're a bit a bit of a, a more mature uh, take, man. And, and they should stick to that, that uh, canon for, for people, you know, instead of trying to dumb it down for a younger audience, um, make it more child appropriate or whatever. That sucks. It's such a turnoff, man. But this is cool news, man, and uh, that'll be fun to see. And I'm really looking forward to Insomniac Games' uh, take on Wolverine. We probably won't see that until next year, I'm guessing. Um, but I'm really looking forward to that. Insomniac does a great job on Spider-Man, and we'll see what they're saying about the, uh, the Marvel games with some mature ratings moving forward. That's cool. Uh, Ghost Reaper, happy Friday, buddy. How you doing? We talked about this the other day. I'm not going to dive into that. Pivot. Like yelling into the void of, of Google space <clears throat> with uh, Caps Lock. Doing awesome? Fantastic, man. That's great to hear. That's great to hear, man. What are you doing this weekend, man? Awesome, dude. Let's do it. Yeah, we're just picking out all of our articles right now. And uh, we're going to dive into them uh, in depth here in just a moment, my friend. We took a deep dive into uh, the whole <laughs> discussion about video game achievements or trophies, whatever you want to call them. They're called different things in different platforms. Um, there's a bit of a different take on it, depending on if you're a gamer as opposed to a developer. We took a, a bit of a dive into this yesterday's news segment. So if you're interested in that, uh, maybe take a look at, at yesterday's news segment as a VOD. Uh, it's highlighted here again on our Twitch channel, or you can find it as a VOD on our YouTube channel, okay? But we talked about this yesterday. There's good points on both sides of it. I think gamers in general enjoy the achievement thing, though. Uh, you're talking about the achievement stuff back in the day. That's what it's all about. There's still a lot of people, man, that are just achievement hunters, dude. We've got one in this community for sure. Um, and I, I can attest to the fact, again, I talked about this yesterday, but, um, I enjoy, uh, I enjoy getting like, cause I play a lot of my games on PC. I play a lot of my games on steam and, uh, it's fun for me just getting trophies while I play games. It's a cool little like side thing. I don't hunt them though. I'm not a hunter. I'm not an achievement hunter. A lot of people are. They get they get really drawn into that uh, to the point of where they don't feel like they can move on to other games until they finish getting all the achievements or trophies, you know, which I think can feel a bit daunting for some game players. I myself, I just enjoy seeing what like kind of little unique trophies I get. And it's, it's a bit of a flex thing. You get to like flex on, on other gamers a little bit. Cause I play games, uh, in a very hard difficulty, uh, if not the hardest difficulty almost all the time. And, uh, so I end up getting a few, uh, achievements that are a bit more rare than, uh, some other people will get. And it's fun because you see the percentage of people that like play that game that have that trophy and stuff, you know, it's a little bit of a, it's a little bit of a, a low key flex for your profile and stuff. So there are different ins and outs of it. Developers aren't, I think, real keen on it, uh, from time to time, but I, I get both sides of it. Uh, it does promote replayability though, because there are a lot of achievements and trophies that, uh, require you to replay games. And that's one thing that developers, I think, need to be aware of is that it's actually benefiting them to get people to replay their titles, you know? Yo, uh, two days until The Last of Us on HBO hits. 
Oh, dude, Halo Skulls, dude, there was just a big, uh, a big challenge for that, wasn't there? In-game Hidden Skulls, yeah. There was a big uh, uh, Halo Skulls challenge. And uh, I think it was like, how much was the reward? Uh, it was like a bounty thing. Who could who could uh, get through uh, all the Halo, uh, get all the, man, what was the, uh, I think it, there, there were certain kinds of requirements for doing this, this run. It was beating Halo. I think it was like without dying. Once it was beating one of the Halo game campaigns, you could only use certain of the like because it was the skull buffs were play campaign, overlook campaign now. Yeah, I mean, we got to a point for years and years where, especially in games like FPS games and stuff, they just quit making campaigns. You know what I'm saying? Uh, but here recently, it's been making a resurgence for sure. Um, but you're not wrong, you're not wrong. But there was a, there was a big uh, there was a big you might look into it Ghost Reaper. Uh, let me see if I can find it real quick. I'll I'll link it for you. This was we read about this not too long ago. Um, Halo. I think it was like ten thousand dollars or something. Oh, this was it. It was back in July, dude. It was back in July. It was 20K. 20K. Something like that. Yeah. It was 20K. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it was back in, in July. Uh, Here, here. Uh, I'll link I'll link one of these to you. Hold on, dude. Uh, Right here. Kotaku. This will be a good one, dude. This will be a good article. And anybody else is hanging out too, yeah. There was a twenty thousand uh, dollar bounty offered for finishing Halo Two with skulls without dying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and somebody did it, dude. Somebody did it. There you go. Check that out. There you go, man. <laughs> That's cool. That's cool that you brought that up. Yeah, you'll probably enjoy that. We read about that back uh, last summer, and. Uh, we read about it whenever the challenge first came out, and everybody was like, oh, dude, that's pretty wild. Like, I wonder if somebody will be able to do that. And uh, then when somebody actually uh, actually uh, completed it, you know, everybody was kind of wiling out, dude. Yeah, there you go, dude. Yeah, you're welcome, buddy. Yeah. All right, we've already got something up on that front. New King Kong game announced? What? There better be Godzilla in it too, man. <laughs> I was always a Godzilla fan, dude. I was never a King Kong fan. My neighbor growing up was a King Kong fan. And I, I always liked Godzilla, dude. I always thought Godzilla was way cooler. Got some good articles. We'll probably start hitting them in just a moment. Yeah, we already got something up on that. Dead Space movie has been rumor mill stuff for a while. There's nothing official on that front, though, so I'm not going to put any stock in that. Let's just hold tight on that front. There's so many. Look, there's so many video game adaptations into the movie and and, uh, and show world, you know, uh, side of entertainment. And, and uh, is it crazy to think that Dead Space would be coming as well? No, absolutely not, especially with the remake hitting. Um, but well, let's just wait until we get something substantial to go off of before we start trying to like get hyped about something like that. We hit on this yesterday too. Again, uh, just TLDR. Stadia is shutting down on the 18th. January 18th at 11.59 p.m., Okay. January 18th, 11.59 p.m. If you're a Stadia user, that is the it end-all, be-all for Stadia. It's going to be done. If you didn't know, they are giving refunds for uh, purchases of hardware and software. So if you haven't received refunds yet, you should be looking into and trying to uh, get that processed for you, okay? Um, also, if you have saves in uh, games for the platform, that uh, are, are popular titles that were potentially on other services, 
uh, uh, like for instance, there are Ubisoft games that uh, were on Stadia that they have collaborated with Ubisoft to get your save files transferred over into other platforms and, and things like that so that you don't lose all that time you spent working in those uh, those games. Okay, so look into it. That's your TLDR right there for the Stadia stuff. We dive into it in yesterday's news segment, January 12th. So take a look if you're interested, okay? But that's your TLDR right there. Dwayne Johnson, Doom movie, favorite of all time. Yeah, do that. I, I I remember liking that back in the day. You know what's funny to me though, like like going back and watching the old movies like that. Sometimes it it's it's weird because I remember loving some of those movies back in the day, and then I go back and watch it again, and I'm like, oh man, that was pretty crappy. I did it with Spawn here recently. Uh, I tried to go back and watch the old Spawn movie. It was terrible, dude. I remember loving it back in the day when it released. And, dude, I went back and tried to watch it again here recently. Dude, I couldn't watch but, like, 20 minutes of it, and I flipping turned it off. I was like, this is terrible. <laughs> that was a terrible movie, dude. <laughs> the only thing good about it was John Leguizamo, dude, <laughs> in the clown costume and everything. The demon clown, you know what I mean? It was like, <laughs> everything else about it was literally terrible. It was so bad. Ugh. All right, we got that stuff up. Wait, what? What? Twitch streamer banned for showing feet. Look, this isn't video gaming news, but we talk about this a lot because, look, this is the platform we're on. I'm going to look at that. Twitch has been really, really bad about like people being able to determine. They, they've got like terms of service, right? But dude, people, they're not consistent with their punishment. Um, people don't get banned for things that they, you know, a lot of the community think they should get banned for. Uh, and then people get banned for things that uh, they wouldn't, you wouldn't think they should get banned for. It's a flipping really, really uh, sketchy situation on this platform for a lot, which is why quite often for me, I just, I'm like, look, I'm just going to try to stay very away from these lines of this could potentially get me in trouble. You know what I mean? Uh, but it, it's, I'm going to, I'm going to look at that real quick. Let's just stick with these articles for today. How about that? Let's start with this one. Uh, a Twitch streamer was recently banned for showing her feet. What? Rules aren't always clear. Inconsistent bans and punishments. Sometimes justified. Sometimes confusingly unjustified. And so much more. This incident comes as streamer Just Keth was banned after showing her feet on stream. Although feet are a pretty standard body part, can often be fairly visible depending on where you're at or what the weather is like. They're subject of some fetishes. Yeah. What? Which gave her a three-day ban for, quote, offering sexual content after showing her feet, which were an item on a wheel she was spinning for those who donated $20. Although it was intended as a joke, Dexerto pointed out that fetishing behavior or activity, such as fo focusing on body parts, for uh, sexual gratification or erotic roleplay is against Twitch's rules. Okay, so how about all this ASMR licking of like elf ears and crap? This is literally the same thing, dude. Or sleeping streams. You're telling me that the people that sit there and watch other people sleep... And look, dude, I am not yucking other people's yum right now, Okay. Everybody's got their thing, right? Okay, I'm not yucking people's yum. You know what I mean? But if Twitch is going to be banning people out for showing their feet on stream, then you've got to ban people for, for doing hot tub streams. You've got to, because they're just going to be showing too much, too many body parts. You've got to ban people out for doing ASMR 
uh, fake ear licking streams or whatever, because uh, let's be honest, dude, the mouth noise stuff. That's that's an erotic fixation for people. OK. Well, there's different satisfactions across uh, different parts of what I'm talking about here, but a lot of it comes along with a uh, look. So it, the same thing here, though, Ghost. You know what I'm saying? Um, what they're they're uh, they're trying to put this in is an offering sexual content. Feet, my man, or my people. Okay. Feet, dude. Okay. It's not like. Um, Something was being done with their feet, like taking a a uh, like maybe a, a corn cob and buttering it up with their feet or something. You know what I mean? It's not like they were um, insinuating some kind of act with their feet. Literally, just spun a wheel with their feet. You know what I mean? Um, so this is this is. Literally insane, in my opinion. They, they, dude, Twitch has to get their stuff figured out, man. I, I don't understand it. And this is just because, uh, you know, I, I get riled up about this because you talk about somebody that doxed one of their streamers here recently, right? Doxed one of their stream, one of their viewers, excuse me. A streamer doxed one of their viewers and got like a 15-minute ban, you know? And dude, I'm not yucking anybody's yum, okay? Hey man, there. Uh, everybody's got their thing. People have different things that they're into or whatever. Cool, okay. But what this is about is Twitch trying to set different kinds of standards for different people with different kinds of punishments, and it doesn't make any sense, man. You, you know, like, like there's all kinds of content, in my opinion, that could be considered offering sexual content. If that's the way you want to go with this, somebody just showing their feet and spinning a wheel or whatever with their feet, what would you do? Okay, so how about this? What about somebody streaming on Twitch that was a, uh, a handicapped person that didn't have arms, but they wanted to use the wheel and they're always using their feet, you know what I mean, to do things, or using their feet to paint. Are they going to get banned? For offering sexual content? Uh, let's be realistic here. Again, I don't think from everything that I'm reading right here. I'm doing will and only two options I can think is lead squats, show feet. Yeah. I could see this being a, a much different situation. Yeah, I mean, it is a tough topic. It is a tough. It look, and it, honestly, I mean, here's my opinion. This I don't I don't want to see this platform get into a space where it is about sexual kind of content. That's not what I'm talking about. You know what I mean? I think this is an amazing platform for uh, people to share their talents, their creativity. You know what I mean? And to just be able to create some amazing communities with people to share their interests and everything. But I don't want to see this platform get into that space of um, sexual kind of content. I don't want to see this be that. Okay. Uh, there's enough other platforms out there that do that. Go do that somewhere else. That's not what I want here. So that's not what I'm getting at. Let's be very clear. All right. But. I think there's a big difference in somebody showing a body part on stream, just having some fun with an appendage, a foot, and spinning a wheel with it. Um, and maybe I'm missing co some context here, but from what I've read in this article, it doesn't seem like it. As opposed to them actually doing something that would come off more like s insinuating some kind of legitimate sexual content with their feet. You know what I'm saying? This is this is where I think Twitch 
is constantly missing and they're always getting into uh, hot water with the community because they don't look at things critically enough. It's really weird. I don't I don't understand. I'll get off of it, but dude, they, they have a really bad track record of not being consistent. Well, I think it's been, it's been, it, it, it's a, it's a really tough thing, I think, for Twitch to address within the terms of service. Because look, they want people on this platform, right? They want viewership on the platform. What, what, I mean, let's be honest, dude. Sex sells, am I wrong? Okay. So an amount of, um, what they allow to happen are things like hot tub streams, right? Um, so what you'll happen, it, like hot tub streams, man, are really riding that line. You know what I mean? Because uh, hot tub streams also kind of loophole a lot of uh, terms of service that people can't get away with normally, which is like wearing certain kinds of clothing uh, you can't normally wear just on a stream because you are in water you know there's like these loophole situations that you can get through because you're hanging out in water and um i think it's a situation for twitch where they're like you know they they don't want to be um and look i don't know i don't know i don't know the people that, that manage uh this platform or anything like that it seems like they uh they don't want it to turn into what a lot of other platforms have with that kind of content but they, they also don't want to uh you know get rid of a lot of the viewership that is being brought in by some of that real that 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 content that really rides that line you know what i mean oh please don't dude <laughs> Please don't, dude. Look, I like this platform. I really do. Um, I like this platform. I, I don't necessarily, but I, 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 over the years, I've only been streaming on this platform since May of 2021, but I've been a, uh, I've had accounts on this platform since, you know, the mid 20 teens. I've, I've watched a lot of what this platform has done, how it's evolved, grown, and uh, some of what I've seen is is a bit concerning, you know. Um, so it feels like maybe there are a good amount of people that actually work uh, for Amazon slash Twitch that don't really understand exactly what this platform is to people. They don't understand uh, what the best way is to manage it. And everybody's going to have a different viewpoint on, on what that necessarily would be anyways, right? But... Um, I've also seen some interviews with some big time notable content creators on this platform that have had interactions with some of the like brass, if you will, from the platform. And we're like, dude, these people have no idea what it means to be a content creator on the platform. So please, please. Yeah. Yeah. Let's not go that route, please. <laughs> I think things are uh, getting a bit sketchy enough as it is without bringing old uh, Musky in on this too. <laughs> then we'll have Dave Chappelle on the uh, front page every day taking up for him and stuff. You know, it'll be weird. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, dude. All right. <laughs> Too soon, dude. <laughs> All right. New King Kong game announced. Let's get out of that topic, I guess. I might be getting into some bad space. A new King Kong game is in the works. King Kong is uh one of the most iconic characters in fiction. The character made his debut on the big screen in 1933 and has been a pop culture staple ever since. He's been iterated upon countless times through books, games, and films, getting all kinds of big blockbusters from directors like Peter Jackson with all-star casts. 
King Kong is a pillar of cinema, but he has been missing from video games for some time, outside of a somewhat strange appearance in Call of Duty Warzone 2022 with his good pal Godzilla. King Kong hasn't been represented in a game for a while. The last AAA King Kong game was from Ubisoft in 2005 and was a tie-in with the Peter Jackson film. However, he will return to our console soon, as reported by Licensing Magazine. Uh, DeVito Artworks has partnered up with Game Mill Entertainment. Uh, okay, Nickelodeon All-Star Brawl, yeah. To produce a new King Kong game for a variety of platforms. As of right now, we don't know much else about it. We don't know the genre, the exact platforms, or even what it might release. When it might release. But rest assured, King Kong is coming. Interesting. Um... Ubisoft's King Kong game was quite beloved because players got to play as humans fighting monsters on Skull Island, then switched to King Kong for epic set pieces. Whether or not Game Mill will opt to go that route or do something a bit more simple remains to be seen. However, there's no shortage of untapped potential for King Kong video game opportunities, so hopefully they can do this right. I got it. Picture this. Picture this. A retro-style pixel game, right? Where... You've got, like, uh, King Kong could be, like, the main character, right? The big gorilla, King Kong. Then you've got, like, a Godzilla kind of character, too. Like, a big lizard, uh, you know, kind of character. Old retro-style pixel. And then you've got buildings. Buildings. And they can climb the buildings. And they can punch the buildings. They can kick the buildings. They can, like... Uh, grab people out of windows and like eat them and stuff. You know what I mean? And they can also like fight each other around the buildings and stuff. You know? And they could call it King Kong Rampage. Yeah. I might be on to something. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just messing around. We'll see. We'll see what comes with this. We'll see what comes with this. <laughs> we'll keep an eye on it. We'll see what comes. <laughs> you see it? You you can see it? You got me, Ghost? All right, dude. New Xbox Game Pass tier could release sooner than expected. Looks like Xbox users will soon have the option of subscribing to the Game Pass friends and family plan. The new subscription tier was released in other regions last year. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it was in the beta test. Yeah, it allows up to five users on the same plan for one price. Xbox has yet to announce a release date for the new tier, but Xbox uh, Game Pass users on PC have noticed the tier being advertised, which means an announcement should be coming in the near future, possibly at the developer direct plan uh, in less than two weeks. We're going to watch this, uh, by the way, here in this channel, if you guys didn't know. Uh, it's about a week and a half from now. Uh, it's a Wednesday, not this coming Wednesday, but the Wednesday after that. Okay. It's going to be happening at 2 PM or 1400 hours, our time here in the channel. And we'll watch it live together. Um, the, uh, friends, uh, and family plan has been in a beta testing phase. If you didn't know in Ireland and Colombia, uh, for a good portion of last year. And basically what this does is allows you to get into the Xbox Game Pass subscription service with a number of friends or family, just like it says, at a pretty reduced uh, price. I think like even if you were to just get into a friends and family plan with four other people, it would knock the price in half for you, I think. So uh, if they keep the price what it was going to be initially, what we read last year, it would knock the price in half for you for a year's worth of subscription uh, per person. Now, if you get five people, that's even a little bit less, right? Take another fifth out of that. Um, so it's a pretty solid deal, man. And again, it doesn't need to be a, a family, Right. I mean, you just get in a uh, plan on this with like a number of friends or whatever. But uh, yeah, we'll see the. Uh, an image was posted here. Let's take a look. Well, 
Welcome to Game Pass, friends and family, baby. Yeah, we knew it was going to be coming sometime this year. Just didn't know really when. I figured it'd be sometime fairly soon, but... Uh, while the current Game Pass plan allows multiple users on the same account, they all must be in the same house uh, and connected through the uh, home console. That option might work for families with younger kids, but not so much for those with older kids that have moved away or gone off to college. The Game Pass Friends and Family tier will allow users around the country to be on the same account. Naturally, uh, this will result in an increased price point, but Xbox has not made any kind of announcement about how much it will be compared to Xbox Game Pass Ultimate. Wait, what? That sounds weird. Uh huh. Okay, so that's not necessarily what we read last year. Um, interesting. We're gonna have to wait until this comes out. What did the uh? Let's look at this pick again real quick. Doesn't really say much. Okay. Let's wait and see. Let's wait and see. Um, what we had read was that it was going to be actually a pretty nice discount for people to get in on the friends and family uh, Game Pass subscription. So uh, maybe they were just talking about a discount over maybe friends uh or a family plan where people had moved but i don't think so that's not what i read last year we'll keep track and we'll see we'll see chat playstation plus adding first ps1 games of 2023 soon playstation revealed its slate of extra playstation plus games this week for those with the extra and premium tiers of the subscription service and as part of that reveal we also found out which classic games will join the library this month those classic games exclu exclusive to people in the premium tier are, are three different PS1 games, including Star Wars titles and the return of the long-running Siphon Filter series. They'll all be added on January 17th, along with the rest of the PS4 and PS5 games. The three PS1 games being added for the PS Plus Premium members this month are Siphon Filter 3, Star Wars Demolition, and Hot Shots Golf 2. Um... This gives a breakdown of what all those games are if you're interested, okay? But those are coming uh, in about four days, okay? I'll throw it in there in chat if you're interested. If you're a PS Plus member, those are what are coming to you on January 17th. Take a look. GOG has quietly killed off its Steam import service. Uh, good old games Connect had been idle for years, but now it's disconnected. If you're not familiar with uh, GOG, this is what GOG is, okay? Um, and I talked about this whenever uh, it first came, uh, we first grabbed this article. It, it's another PC gaming platform. It's actually owned by uh, CDPR or uh, CD Projekt Red. If you don't know who CD Projekt Red is, we're talking about... Um, you know, the developer behind the Witcher series. Peter, what's up, my friend? Uh, the Witcher series, Cyberpunk 2077, uh, all those titles, right? So um, one of the things that is real nice about GOG is that they don't utilize DRM, okay? So if you own a title on their platform, you can download it, install it, and you never need to contact their servers in order to play that game it's drm free it, the only reason you would need an internet connection is if that game is a a live service or multiplayer kind of game which would require you to have an internet connection uh to actually play the title because that's inherently what kind of game it is but just to play games uh you don't need to contact their servers or anything like that as long as they're downloaded and installed it's a drm free platform um, which is amazing. It's great. Uh, the other thing that's really nice is if you look over here, um, install GOG, Epic, Ubisoft. Uh, these are platforms that I have connected my other accounts to, right? Into their, their GOG platform. So one of the things that's really uh, has always been Shut good about- Shut your pie hole, buddy. 
Okay, man. <laughs> Rude. Pinky, what's up, dude? My dude. What's up, man? How are you? Uh, happy Friday, guys. Peter, Pinky, happy Friday. Ghost, I think I told you happy Friday. But, dude, happy Friday again if, uh, if, or, or if I didn't already. Or happy Friday again if I did. So, GOG uh, is really, really nice for allowing you to sync in your other libraries from your other PC gaming platforms. You can see Epic, Ubisoft, you can do EA. Um, it's a real nice thing to give you a one-stop shop for being able to come in and look at all your libraries together. Instead of having to go, let's look at Steam, everything I have on Steam. Let's go look at everything I have on Epic. Let's pull up uh, Origin and look at everything I have on Origin. Okay, now let's go pull up uh, you know, EA Play and everything I have on EA Play. It, you can just uh, sync up your libraries from all of those different platforms into GOG. And it's a really, really nice quality of life thing to be able to just pull up this one platform and look at uh, the majority of, of what your PC gaming library consists of in one a one-stop shop here, okay? Um, but apparently GOG has quietly killed off its Steam import service. Uh You've uh, been champing at the bit for the return of GOG Connect, the service that allowed you to import selected games from your Steam library over to your GOG collection. I've got some bad news. GOG has finally and quietly retired the service with the URL now redirecting users to the store's front page. Eagle-eyed Reddit users began to notice the redirect around a week ago, even though the page was still accessible as recently as January 1st. The lack of an official announcement meant it was hard to be sure if the service was gone for good. However... A GOG spokesperson tells PCG that they, quote, can confirm that GOG Connect is no longer supported and is removed from GOG's page. It's sad news, but not at all surprising. I don't even remember the last time the service had games available. Its offerings were always time limited, giving players a brief window to import the available games if they owned them on Steam. And the last time it was mentioned as a going concern on our own site was during a Chinese New Year's sale several years ago. That sentiment was echoed by GOG, which told us that for a long time, nothing really happened there. So we've decided to shut it down. So what this is talking about is not necessarily being able to import your library to show what you have on Steam. But this is talking about being able to import the games that you own on Steam. You could actually own on GOG as well, I think. Rather than straight up adding your Steam games to your GOG library, which I have to imagine was always a difficult thing to uh, cajole publishers into allowing... Players are now encouraged to connect various platforms and create their own games library via G GOG Galaxy, right? The platform's own launcher. Hold on, one second. Apologies, apologies. Uh, okay. Yeah, rather than straight up adding your Steam games to your GOG library, which I have to imagine was always a difficult thing to uh, cajole publishers into allowing, players are now encouraged to, quote, connect various platforms and create their own games library via GOG Galaxy. Platform's own launcher, which attempts uh, the... Un An enviable task of corralling your various games libraries into one application. Uh, yeah, uh, but it is nice that they at least still do that. That's what I was talking about. You can still do that with Steam. So you can still uh, import your Steam library. I don't do that. I'll show you. Uh, I'll, I'll talk about what I do there. So it's not quite the same thing as getting full, fat, DRM-free extra copies of your Steam games. That's what they were talking about. So it's a shame to see GOG Connect go quietly into that good night even if it had been on life support for a few years now. Yeah, so apparently, I, and I didn't really know that was a thing, but they had GOG Connect, which allowed you to basically uh, get free copies on GOG of all the games you owned on Steam as well. Which was That's pretty sick. I didn't know that. But you can still import your, um, like your Steam library into your, uh, your library on GOG. Um, just as you can with these other platforms and stuff. I don't do that because Steam's my primary, so I just always use Steam.
But what I do is I, I do use GOG for a lot of my other platforms like Epic, Ubisoft. Uh, I did have EA on here. I need to reconnect it though. Uh, of course, the ones that I already own on GOG, you know, it pulls all these into my library. So it allows me to just go in, to look at all the things I have in my library from uh, across all those other platforms. It's a real easy one-stop shop outside of what I have on Steam, you know. So, cool. Well, that's uh, that's something. I didn't know that was a thing, man. Marvel Games Boss discusses possibility of more M-rated superhero games. Marvel Games has opened up about the possibility of some M-rated superhero games. Marvel Games has made major strides in the last decade by breaking away from movie tie-ins and creating more premium AAA standalone stories. This has allowed the label to produce some truly wonderful superhero stories that aren't possible in other mediums and allows for new takes on massive characters that have existed for as long as 60 years. The majority of these titles have been celebrated for injecting a breath of fresh air into these characters because they have the freedom to tell a compelling story that takes risks. One risk that many are curious to see Marvel games take on is whether or not it will do an M-rated game. Given Marvel is a brand that is known and enjoyed by families and children, mature stories outside of the comics are few and far between, unfortunately. Logan, Daredevil, and The Punisher have broken the mold in live action and X-Men Origins Wolverine's video game tie-in had an M rating, but that rating is almost never applied to other Marvel games, especially in its current iteration. However, when sp speaking with ComicBook.com about the recent release of the MetaQuest 2 version of Iron Man VR, Marvel Games VP Bill Roseman uh, touched on the idea of M rated Marvel games. It's something we've talked about. This is the quote from him, uh, from Bill Roseman. It's something we've talked about, and it comes down to character being authentic, appropriate, and power and responsibility, said Roseman. Power is we get to work with these great characters. The responsibility is using them correctly. I agree. You can try to make a mature game with any characters. Would it be right to have a mature power pack game? No, it doesn't fit the themes and the characters. It's not the right thing to do. Certain characters could, but we take it very seriously. We sit down and talk about what's the player fantasy. What do you expect from this character? Who's the audience? If we're going to go down that path, how do we responsibly create it, market it, and sell it? The vice, the other side of that is also what I think that creators need to be taking into consideration as well, though. Like I said before, there are a lot of characters that are traditionally a bit more brash, extreme, kind of gnarly, that they really dumb down into these child appropriate youth appropriate kind of characters which is disgusting <laughs> i hate it uh with everything it's all about the rating the comics the games marvel's past is filled with stories of all different ratings and i'm not just, just talking about marvel i'm talking about uh the entertainment industry across as a whole you know what i mean characters through uh all forms of entertainment um, it's about if we stay within that rating. Is it correct for the character? With whatever marketing we do, does it end up in the right hands and the right audience? Those are all the questions we ask ourselves. We have the power. We have the characters. Our responsibility is to do the right thing for the character, the audience, and Marvel itself. It at least sounds like they're uh, taking a good hard look at, at uh, what characters should maybe have an, a mature rating in some of their content. Given Wolverine's history of mature stories, both due to the level of violence and the adult themes they tackle, some have wondered if Marvel's Wolverine from Insomniac will embrace an M rating. Oh, please, dude. That'd be so dope. As of right now, we really don't know how it will be rated, but Insomniac has stated it will have a mature tone. Only time will tell if this will usher in another M rating for a Marvel video game, who will likely be waiting a while. I doubt it. I don't think they will. I think it would be awesome if they did. But they won't because they want to cater to a wider audience. Uh, quote me on it and we'll see what happens. Would it be a, a cooler experience, in my opinion, if they did a mature rating and really, really uh, held true to some of uh, what Wolverine has always been? Absolutely. Will they do that? Probably not. Because they want to cater to a younger audience. We'll see. I could be wrong. But I'm probably right. Uh, so, uh, Geo Games, uh, or Geo or, uh, Games, partners Ubidus, shut your mouth, for cloud gaming platform.
Geo Games Cloud, uh, if I'm pronouncing that correctly, is currently available on Geo set-top box, smartphones, and web browsers. Geo Games Cloud is available free of cost for a limited period of time across Geo set-top box, Android smartphones, and web browsers. Uh, <clears throat> on Thursday, so yesterday, Geo Games uh, signed a 10-year deal with Paris, France-based white-label cloud gaming solutions provider GameStream to officially launch its cloud gaming platform in India. Um Luminous is thrilled to showcase the power of uh, Heo's advanced 5G network of latency and bandwidth demanding AAA cloud games. Heo's 5G and cloud game service should benefit the majority of Indian gamers to enjoy popular titles without upgrading their playing devices, said Wesley Q, uh, CEO of uh, Ubitus. This gaming-led partnership between Ubitus and uh, Heo Games Cloud Gaming is set to provide Indian users across, uh, excuse me, Indian users access to a wonderful selection of games from Ubitus, diverse library, and help them gain a truly immersive cloud gaming experience, said uh, Kieran Thomas, Chief Executive Officer, Heo Platforms Limited. Okay, uh, we'll see if we get any kind of uh, more info out of that front. Interesting. All right. So all of our uh, friendos out of that region of the world, India, uh, maybe a new cloud gaming platform to dive into and, and take a look at. Let me know if you do. All right. Let me know what you think. Gaming giant Sega advert reveals planning new Mario and Sonic release for Paris 2024. Speculation has grown among gamers after a listing for a client programmer by Japanese gaming uh, company Sega specified criteria including programming work and game development engines Unity 4 and Unreal. The advertisement also contained links to the uh, Sonic website and the official Tokyo 2020 video games website. Sega first published Olympic-themed Mario and Sonic video games for the 2008 Olympic Games in Beijing. There were further releases for London... 2012, Rio 2016, and the Olympics in Tokyo, which were postponed to 2021. Special editions were also produced for the Winter Olympics at Vancouver in 2010 and Sochi in 2014. Um, the characters have always been popular, and in Tokyo's handover sequence, shh, there you go, uh, at the 2016 Olympics, the late Japanese Prime Minister uh, Shinzo Abe appeared dressed as Super Mario on stage at the Maracanã Stadium in Rio de Janeiro. It is thought possible that Sega will repeat their Tokyo 2020 strategy by releasing a Mario and Sonic themed game alongside another official Olympic video game. For the uh, games in the Japanese capital, this was called the Olympic Games Tokyo 2020, the official video game, and gave players the option to challenge the costumes worn by the characters participating in these sports events. Uh, Sega has been long-standing partners of the Olympics since producing a special edition for Barcelona in 92. Sonic the Hedgehog had first appeared in a computer game in 91, and Mario was first seen in 85. Further speculation that Sonic will appear as a Lego character in 2023. All right, well, we'll see. Yeah, they've long been associated with Olympics and stuff, so we'll see what happens there. PS5 update will include Discord support. You know who else did this recently? And cloud streaming. Who else just did uh, Discord support uh, just a few months ago, you know, in an update? Oh, Xbox. <laughs> Weird. <laughs> Weird, man. Oh, dude. All right. I mean, this is this is good. It's just it's funny. Uh, look, I mean, honestly, it really to me. I I've normally con in the console space. I've normally been a PlayStation fan, but over the past couple of years, I've really seen more that I'm enthused about coming out of Xbox than what I'm seeing coming out of PlayStation. It looks more like PlayStation is following suit of what Xbox is doing than PlayStation actually doing anything. Um, inventive and creative of their own accord and um, when they do try with things like PlayStation Stars it's kind of a bust um, aside from the fact that I see things like 
with Xbox, you know, they got Phil Spencer at the helm there, whom, while is a very good business person, also comes off as a, a true gamer. The things I hear Phil Spencer say uh, as the head of Xbox is uh, a lot of stuff that makes me feel like, I mean, there was a quote last year where he was quoted as saying, somebody questioned him, what's the biggest title you're currently anticipating uh, playing that hasn't been released yet? He said, God of War Ragnarok, a PlayStation proprietary game. Whereas PlayStation doesn't really have anybody at the helm um, that is notable like that, that stands out, that comes off as not just a good business person or, or good business people, but also as legitimate gamers, you know? And I think that's one of the things that uh, I've seen stand out to me over the past couple of years for sure in regards to these two companies because they are the biggest competitor to one another in the um, console war, right? Nintendo's there for sure. And Nintendo is a competitor without a doubt. But Nintendo has their own little space. You know, they've, they've got a niche little market there uh, that Xbox and PlayStation can't really hit. PlayStation and Xbox are really... Uh, right there in each other's space. You know, they're they're trying to pop each other's bubble, if you will. Um, the upcoming PS5 update will include full Discord integration as well as cloud streaming, according to some sources. This integration has been in the works since 2021. Insider Gaming sources gave information regarding the 7.00 update coming to PlayStation 5 in March of 2023. The sources uh, stated that the update will include the Discord integration that Sony revealed way back in 2021. The partnership started with PlayStation and Discord working together to improve PSN voice communications. Now it seems like they are working towards a full Discord integration. The integration should help players with their in-game communications. Discord has become synonymous with gaming voice communications, so this is definitely a move in the right direction. Discord's amazing, and uh, it's great that these platforms are incorporating this as uh, part of their a full integration of part of their plat platforms moving forward, you know, not just like uh, some kind of like side note. The sources continue by saying that the Discord integration is not the only feature coming to mention. They mentioned that alongside that cloud streaming is also coming to the PS5. This feature will let players play the games they own without having to install it on their devices. This is very similar to the cloud gaming that is already happening for the Switch, Xbox, and PC. The sources said that the feature was under the name Cronus and has been in development and testing for a while. The downside, however, is that the feature is supposedly only for the PlayStation Plus Premium tier. Despite that, it is still a pretty nifty feature. As for when this uh, exact, as for when exactly this update will arrive, Insider Gaming's Tom Henderson revealed uh, that the update will arrive at around March 8th. As of the writing of this article, there are still no official announcements regarding the integration. So, uh... It'll happen somewhere around there. Fat Pat, what is up, my friend? Happy Friday, buddy. What's up, dude? Retro Bit Gaming reveals a Game Boy Player-inspired GameCube controller. <laughs> dude, that is sick. How dope is that? <laughs> dude, that is gorgeous. I love it. Retro Bit Gaming has been behind a number of funky throwback-inspired controllers for Switch over the years. And now the company is taking us back in time even further with a Game Boy Player style controller that is made for the GameCube. Or Wii, if you're so inclined. The legacy GC wired controller has the appearance of the classic Game Boy Player controls from Hori back in the day, but with a new lick of color and some fancy modern features. Try playing Apex with that? Yo, you're not playing Apex right if you're not playing Apex uh, hands-free and on a Dance Dance Revolution pad, all right? So I don't know what you're talking about, Fat Pat. <laughs> uh, uh, the button layouts make this a prime option for those uh, out there still using the Game Boy Player. You know who you are. And you have the option to set the D-pad's analog inputs to either the left or right stick. To, uh, so those who are up for a challenge can even take on some single stick Super Smash Bros. Melee. Uh, for a closer look at so, uh, some of the controller's features and a few new snaps of both the black and indigo models, check out the following from Retrobit Gaming. <laughs> Yo, have you seen? There's a there's a streamer 
There's this girl that that plays uh, Elden Ring, dude, on a DDR pad. That's it. It's just a DDR pad. It should be should be fighting all the bosses and stuff, dude. It's wild. People are crazy at video games. Crazy. Look, man. I just uh, I feel pretty good about myself most of the time beating games on like the hardest difficulty because I play games on on the hardest difficulty almost all the time. And then I see people doing crap like that or doing like blindfold runs or uh, doing no hit runs like the Happy Hob doing no hit runs all the time in these really really tough games. I'm like. I suck at video games. <laughs> oh, he's paralyzed? No, I don't I don't think I have seen it, dude. I don't think I have seen it. Yeah. Yo. But yo, you bring up a good point there though, dude. Uh, you know, accessibility. There are a lot of people that uh, you know, they they uh, incorporate these personal like uh difficulties on themselves by using certain kinds of uh, wild controllers like playing Ellen Ring with a uh, Guitar Hero controller or something like that. You know what I mean? There's all kinds of wild stuff that, like that that happens. But there are a lot of people uh, that out there that have, I talk about this quite often because it's become a very, very, very uh, highlighted thing in the industry, right? Which is accessibility. There are a lot of people out there that have various uh disabilities whether it be mental or physical or what have you and um accessibility is a huge deal you can uh you can not drop links in here dude but you can uh dm me dude yeah you can dm me slide up in my dms bro sorry man uh the only only people that can uh link in the chat are myself mods or vips it's uh it's an issue of i've had malicious stuff happen and i just want the community to be safe that's it that's all it's about there are so many people in the community that i trust but uh i've just had too many randos come in and drop malicious links and stuff so uh it just i just don't let it happen yeah but you can uh you can slide up in my dms bro you know what i'm saying get up in there yeah 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 i don't it's you're not gonna get banned like, if you try to post a link, dude, it's just going to asterisk it out. Yeah, it'll just auto-mod it. It'll just, it just won't allow the link to be posted. That's it. I'm not going to ban anybody for it. I'm not, you know, that's wild, <laughs> you know. But, yeah, it's just a matter of keeping everybody safe. Oh, or, I mean, you can throw it in the Discord. You can you can DM me on Discord or Twitch or whatever, dude. Uh yeah, accessibility is a big deal. PlayStation, we just touched recently over the past week. PlayStation is releasing uh, and has announced their uh, official controller for uh, accessibility. You know, people with disabilities and things like that. Um, oh, yeah. Forget about it in other streams. Yeah, yeah. Well, I have I have new community members that come in all the time. And they'll be, like, trying to, like, give me links to talk about in the news and stuff. I'm like, oh, hey, man, like, just understand it's nothing against you. It's just, there's some bad actors out there and it's trying to keep you guys safe is all it is, you know? Uh, so it doesn't time anybody out. It doesn't ban anybody out. All it does is it just removes, it basically turns the the link into a, a, a few asterisks is all it does in my channel, man. <laughs> <laughs> dude, that's actually terrible. Yeah, that's a bit of an issue, dude. Uh, check these out. Yeah, so uh, compatible with Nintendo, GameCube, and Wii. Macros allow D-pad to function as the analog or C-stick. Uh, 10 foot, 3 meter cable link includes turbo functionality. Look at these. Those are slick, dude. GameCube controllers were weird. <laughs> oh, dude. Uh, for those uh, whose hearts leapt the thought of using this on an emulator, we're afraid the GCN cable does not make that possible just yet. This being said, Retrobit has teased on Twitter that it may be working on a USB model in the future. Yeah, for sure it will be. There are a lot of uh, like pieces of hardware and stuff too that use like uh, Retrobit or uh, what's the uh, 
the bit dough controllers, stuff like that, you know, and they usually end up getting these incorporated pretty quick on those types of like emulators or uh, hardware, things like that. So uh, it's pretty cool, man. It's pretty neat. If you guys want this, I'll throw it in chat. I'll take two of those. Yeah, dude. Aren't those pretty cool? Yeah, that's pretty neat, man. I like that. I like that. That's pretty cool, man. I like it. Uh, Google and NVIDIA uh, agree with Sony over Microsoft Cloud uh, gaming concerns. Well, of course, NVIDIA does. You know what I mean? Uh, look, uh, I, I mean... <laughs> Here's the thing. This is the thing. Uh, this is what you have to take into consideration here, right? Both of these corporations here, Google and NVIDIA, have uh, a lot to lose by this, right? It's like uh, a big play by Microsoft bringing in Activision Blizzard is that this is going to help them make a huge pivot into creating an app store like Google and Apple have. They've been very public about uh, that's what they're trying to do with this. Uh, they want to make an app store. They want to be. Uh, they want to have an app store in the same capacity as somebody like Google and, and Apple, right? And they have been very, very, very open about the fact that this acquisition is going to put them in a good position to get that up and running. So there's Google having a big problem, right? Oh, man, we can't have anybody competing with us, you know? And uh, then NVIDIA, right? Who's the one big other cloud gaming space competitor right now to Xbox or to Microsoft and Xbox, right? NVIDIA. <laughs> so NVIDIA's like, bro, you can't let them get all these IPs, <laughs> you know? Of course they are, you know? Uh, come on. Uh, Bloomberg, look, here's my thing. I actually think if anybody was going to take over Activision Blizzard, which I think needs to be done, Activision Blizzard is a terrible organization. And a big part of it is the fact that they uh, apparently just can't get rid of Bobby Kotick. Uh, I also think Mike Ibarra needs to be ousted. Somebody that's going to uh, stand behind something like Diablo Immortal that hard, get wrecked, dude. You know what I mean? Mike Ibarra can get, get ousted too. Uh, but Bobby Kotick, out after all the crap that has gone down at Activision Blizzard, for Bobby Kotick to still be at the top of that organization, flipping how, dude? I It's beyond me. I don't understand it. But... I think that if Activision Blizzard is to ever turn into anything decent, again, if Blizzard is to ever turn into anything remotely, remotely close to the Blizzard that we once knew, it's going to have to take something like another company buying them out and rebuilding. You know what I mean? Kotick's got to be gone. you got to get away from a lot of this stupid, you know... And look, is Microsoft a giant company? Is uh, a big vision of theirs money? Absolutely. But of a lot of the bigger companies, again, I at least see some kind of uh, focus on quality gaming content coming out of Xbox as opposed to a lot of these other bigger companies. Another thing about Microsoft, they have historically dealt with their own issues. So... I, I've said from the get-go, they've dealt with their own internal issues in the past. They've got a track record with being able to fix those kinds of things. So I think if a big company was going to be able to actually pay enough to buy Activision Blizzard and go in and be able to uh, rebuild it in a pretty good way, Microsoft and Xbox are a company that could potentially get it taken care of. You know what I mean? Does it mean they absolutely will? No. No. It's not a positive thing. But I don't think there are a whole lot of companies that could 
match them in in maybe getting that taken care of. You know what I mean? Uh, it's not Hot World Abe's Odyssey. The one that makes me think that. It's probably his face, dude. It's that main character's face from Oddworld, dude. The controller is—it's basically his face, right? <laughs> I don't know. Maybe that's it. <laughs> uh I mean, you know, they've been doing things like unionizing. They've got like their subsidiary of Raven Software that that unionized. They've got some other unions that popped up in there. But, dude, it—it's. I'm telling you. Bobby Kotick is like straight up a, a virus dude in that place that uh, allowed a lot of that terrible frat uh, frat culture, misogynistic, toxic, overwork, uh, you know, kind of stuff to go on in, in that organization. And he's still there, dude. How? Everybody, there are so many other people that got ousted, fired, or had to retire, or had to quit, or whatever, uh, resign. Bobby Kotick's still there, dude. There's something weird going on. And I ultimately, I think that whoever, I, I mean, for that company to change, it, it would have to take that. Now, look, the thing to, to, to note here is something like, dude, there is no denying the fact that Activision Blizzard's portfolio is stupid. It's stupid fat, dude, like me. <laughs> that that flipping portfolio, man, is insane. So it's a very, very, very big deal. You know, and you know, you've got some what is being called unique title like Call of Duty, but there's a lot of other stuff in there too. It's huge for Microsoft for getting this app store going to compete with Google and, and Apple. It's huge for their uh, subscription service moving forward. It's just huge for them being able to take some of these old IPs that have been sitting there forever under Activision Blizzard that haven't been touched and for them to like revamp them and stuff. It, it, the, uh, the amount of content they're acquiring out of there is absurd, right? Bloomberg has reported via anonymous sources that Google and NVIDIA have both communicated with the FTC to share Sony's concerns. And here's my other thing about Sony, okay? If you haven't heard my take on this, is there always going to be some kind of anti-competitiveness in any industry? Anytime another company absorbs a, a, some other company? Absolutely. That is naturally what happens. If another company buys out some other company, you're removing competition, which results in an amount of uh, anti-competitiveness. It's just inherently part of it. What is wild to me is that Sony is trying to make this look like Xbox is trying to put them out of business or something. You know, when over the entire history of Xbox, uh being a thing, being a company out of Microsoft, their big competition has been PlayStation, right? Yet PlayStation has always been head and shoulders above them. They've always, you can go look at the numbers, PlayStation has always sold double the consoles. They, uh, It's like Xbox has always been the one that has had to stay very inventive and... Uh, come up with real creative ways to compete with Sony, right? So they've they've been the ones that have really, you know, set the groundwork for a lot of these, you know, industry defining things uh, that we're seeing come about with like subscription services and cloud gaming and things like that, where Sony's like following suit, you know, because this is what Xbox has had to do forever. To remain competitive in the industry. Now, Sony's trying to go, oh, well, they're just trying to put us out of business. You know what it is? Sony is trying, is actually the way I see this is that Sony's being anti competitive here. They don't want this to happen because Sony doesn't want anything to change from the way things have always been. Okay. PlayStation, 
does not want to have to be what Xbox has always had to be, which is having to be very uh, creative, think outside the box, find ways in which they can compete with then Xbox, right? Uh, so I find it very funny that Sony's like, oh, this can't happen, you know? Uh, even though Sony's always been the one that's been like above Xbox anyways. It's really weird. Um, oh, they absolutely f- should feel threatened. But I, I, I think that's that's what's funny about it to me, though. Xbox is the one that has always been threatened. You know what I mean? Xbox has always been threatened. Now, here's the thing that's different. Xbox is a subsidiary or a, a, a branch of Microsoft, which Microsoft is massive. <laughs> you know what I mean? So they've always had that backer to keep them afloat. Yeah. And PlayStation has Sony. And Sony's very big too. Um... So they both have that component to them, right? And you're not wrong, Ghost. You're not wrong. Uh, Sony should feel threatened. But Xbox, like I was saying, I feel like Xbox is the one that has always felt threatened, while PlayStation just kind of sat on their throne and went, yep, uh, here's another new console, and we're just going to sell double of what Xbox does, and uh, yeah, yeah. While well, Xbox has had to, you know, go out and work hard and, and remain competitive and be creative. And and, X, and Sony doesn't want that to change, right? That's the way I see it. Are, do they feel threatened? Absolutely, they should. But yeah, I, I find it real stupid that, you know, they're like, this is good, just going to be real anti-competitive. When really, they're the ones that kind of are coming off as anti-competitive too. They don't want to have to compete. They want to sit where they've always sat, <laughs> which is at the top of that war between them and Xbox. The concerns are numerous by different parties in the case, but the area that Google, NVIDIA, and Sony agree concerns Microsoft cloud gaming business. Look, and I don't have all the ins and outs of this situation. That's just the way I perceive it, okay? Everybody's absolutely welcome to their own uh, viewpoint on this situation, and I am open to discuss it with uh, everybody. I, 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 I love having civil discussions about these uh, my points of view are not the end-all, be-all. That's, I'm just trying to express my own point of view about these, these kinds of situations, right? I don't have all the information about what's going down in regards to all this stuff. It's just the way I perceive it. And uh, I love having conversations about this stuff with you guys. So, you know, we can talk about it. Absolutely. A key component of Microsoft's business strategy with the Xbox brand is to push Xbox gaming outside of its own consoles. Cloud gaming allows gamers to play Xbox titles on phones, browsers, Smart TVs and more. It utilizes Xbox's Game Pass subscription service to provide these titles. Microsoft is slowly building a strong repertoire of titles exclusive to its service through acquisitions and the purchase of Activision Blizzard has the potential to make some of gaming's biggest names exclusive to the service. From Overwatch to Call of Duty to Candy Crush, Activision Blizzard owns a lot that Microsoft can use to leverage customers to its services, both on Xbox hardware and on other devices through cloud gaming. Whilst Google and NVIDIA have not expressed concerns over the benefits the deal would bring to Xbox consoles, they do take issue with cloud gaming as it it's an area in which they compete. NVIDIA has NVIDIA GeForce Now, whilst Google has its own cloud gaming services, including the discontinued Stadia. Uh, yeah, that is got like five days left on Stadia, right? The services representing these companies stayed unnamed with Bloomberg. Uh I try to stay away from this topic a lot right now because I always end up kind of getting on a tangent with it, you know, uh, giving my side of it because not everybody's always heard how what my take is, and I feel like it's important um, just how this entire situation has kind of come off to me. Does it absolutely put Microsoft in a very, very, very prominent position in the industry with all of this stuff they would get? Not just the development studios under Activision Blizzard, but all of those IPs as well. No doubt about it. I am not denying the fact that this could potentially set up an anti-competitive environment for numerous other businesses, right? But 
Is it overall anti-competitive and bad for the industry? Or is it overall maybe a better thing for this to happen to promote some competition, to get some of these other companies off their butts, to get some some unique ideas flowing and some more uh, you know things happening in the industry, get somebody in there that can revamp uh, Activision Blizzard you know, turn them into a, a somewhat of a decent developer again, a decent company. Um, I think that's what I'm trying to get people to take a look at. Both sides of the the uh, the field here, right? I don't know for a fact. I'm just trying to get the uh, the gear the, the the gears grinding there for people a little bit, you know. Um, here we go, guys. We've been touching on this the entire week. Wizards of the Coast cancels their Dungeons and Dragons uh, updated OGL. So they had come out with this new open gaming license that was going to supersede uh, their old OGL that was going to be very, very, very bad for uh, creators using uh, aspects of D&D in their own uh, creations. Wizards of the Coast, publisher of Dungeons & Dragons, has seemingly canceled the public release of its updated D&D open gaming license for a second time. An announcement set to share the new details of the game's license was allegedly planned for Thursday, yesterday. Uh, However, io9 reports reports plans have now been scrapped. According to sources speaking to the website, Wizards of the Coast is struggling to generate a response to fans understandably upset about changes to the OGL. The leaked draft to, of the document suggests that many creators will lose the ability to monetize Dungeons & Dragons adjacent content, including third-party publishers who release standalone adventures. It's a significant change that will impact entire careers and livelihoods. Here's what you need to know. If, you do, if you're not familiar with what this situation is about, the long-standing OGL, right, um, which again stands for the uh, Open Gaming License, well, it's kind of a mutually beneficial situation uh, because it allowed creators to take aspects of Dungeons and & Dragons and spin them into their own creations, their own worlds, whether it be tabletop stuff, video games, what have you, right? And it was a very nice kind of uh, license, right? So um, it didn't put too many constraints on people. It uh, creators. It it, it it was very very uh, good for people to use. Now at the same time, what it did was it brought in a lot of, and for those creators, it kept them from having to develop their own kind of stuff u- unique that people wouldn't be comfortable with or already aware of. And a lot of people already know how to use Dungeons and Dragons and things like that, right? So. It's really good for new content creators. Um, For Wizards of the Coast, it brought more and more and more visibility to what Dungeons and Dragons is. So it was. It's always been a very mutually beneficial kind of situation. There, there's more to it than that, but you know, TLDR. That's kind of what it was. the OGL wasn't intended to fund major comp- competitors, and it wasn't intended to allow people to make D&D apps, videos, or anything other than printed or printable materials while using gaming. The leaked OGL draft reportedly reads, We are updating the OGL in part to make that very clear. Any company which adapts the rules of Dungeons & Dragons for their own use, for example, random o time, please somebody win that, dude. Uh, an alternative... Uh, tabletop role-playing games like Pathfinder will likely be required to make changes to comply with the updated OGL rules. Fan backlash against the planned changes has been loud and severe, with several prominent industry voices pointing out that the original OGL is the reason why Dungeons & Dragons became popular in the modern era. Absolutely. As the more open license granted the ability for everyone to create new stories, share adventures, and create engaging content online. 20 years ago, I helped create the OGL, which helped save Dungeons & Dragons. Original OGL co-creator Ryan Dancy said of the changes on Twitter, Today that license is at risk of being changed by Hasbro and Wizards of the Coast. I am hoping that a coordinated response by the community might make them reconsider their plans. Uh, Others in the community, like cosplayer and content creator uh, Guinea D, 
have called for a boycott of Dungeons and Dragons content. Nice try, Ghost. Here, man, let me see if I can get one. Ah, dude. These are the ones that people always win on, too, man. Uh, come on, somebody win that. I need to give out a sub. Let's go, let's go. Uh, for those asking how they can help push back against OGL 1.1, we now know that Wizards of the Coast is looking at Dungeons and Dragons Beyond subscriptions as a relevant metric, D said. This is your chance to send them a message. Just sent mine. This was accompanied by a screenshot of a canceled D&D Beyond subscription. Many fans have taken this advice to heart, canceling their subscriptions to send a clear message to Wizards of the Coast about their opposition to the updated OGL. Briefly, this response cr uh, crashed the D&D Beyond servers, with the landing page reportedly shut down temporarily due to website errors. It's possible this rough and related backlash online is what forced the alleged cancellation of the public OGL announcement. How this standoff will be resolved is currently unclear. Uh, with mounting hostility amongst its most passionate fans, Wizards of the Coast may be forced to reconsider its plans for the future of Dungeons & Dragons. For now, fans await official word on company changes with bated breath. So is this article bad news for imagination creators, or do I have it wrong? So uh, right now, this is this has been bad news for creators that were in the process of developing any kind of content that would utilize D&D-related uh, content within their own content, or any kind of creators in the future that would have utilized D and D content for their stuff. Um, it probably would have prevented a lot of people from using any kind of D and D related content in their own, um, creations moving forward. Um, so uh, hopefully I'm answering your question now because of there, there's been so much backlash and criticism about this. Uh, it looks like, this is at least a bit of good news right now. It looks like there's been so much backlash and criticism about the OGL, the, the new OGL that they were trying to release, that they're currently, it's either being postponed for release or scrapped right now. So uh, it was supposed to be released already and they haven't done it at this point because there's been so much uh, criticism about it. So, uh, look, here's what this is though. I mean, ultimately what this comes down to is, um, this has been a situation that's very, been very mutually beneficial for both parties, both sides, Cre creators and wizards of the coast for their, their D and D, uh, content. Right. Um, but what this basically comes down to is they saw, uh, how popular, this has resulted in Dungeons and Dragons becoming. And we're like, oh, let's update our OGL so that we stand to be the primary benefactors off this moving forward. So it wasn't. This is this is what I want you to understand. And this is what we see so often in the gaming world uh, with developers and things like that. A, a company loses sight. Right, they lose sight. They get these people at the top of the company that have no understanding of what the content's about, about quality content, about taking care of the community, the people that actually care about what this content means. It's all money focus, right? So then they they do things like this. They go, look, we're not making enough money off this. So we don't care about anything else. We're going to change up the rules and regulations to make sure that we're the, the sole benefactor off of everything moving forward. And we don't care about anybody else. Even though it's all everybody else that has really set them up to be so popular in the first place. You know what I mean? That's basically what this situation is. And so um, this is what I would say to people. There's a lot of love for Dungeons and Dragons, right? People love D&D. But I would be very, very careful about Wizards of the Coast, any of their content, 
who they are as a company, and their overarching company, who they sit under of Hasbro moving forward. Uh, right now, it looks like the new OGL has been canceled. So, so far, that's good. <laughs> Yo, I saw you come up playing some Gwent, brother. What are you doing? <laughs> you just hopping in there to see what's up? Like your rank and stuff or what? Yo, what's up, Busy King? Your face, dude. Oh, your face. Uh-uh. What's up, dude? So, uh, Reject was a uh, hopped in daily reward. I figured it might be something like that. Yeah, cool, man. Get anything good? Just some currency or something? Like his hair? Look at you talking about this? You talking about this hair? Just some ore word. Uh, ore is what you use to make the uh the uh the nice uh animated cards though, right? Dude, the animated cards are dope. Yo, happy Friday, Reject. Happy Friday, Busy King. The weekend's upon us, my dudes. Yo, I slept like crap last night, by the way. It's going to be a, a rough day. So right now, at least they have not uh, released the OGL like they said they would. That's at least a bit of good news. We'll see what happens moving forward, okay? Oh, that's a meteorite powder. My bad. Oh, yeah, yeah. Or is used by the card packs. My bad, dude. Yeah, cool, cool. All right. Uh, yo, this is the last article I have for the day. Uh, anybody has anything to add, let me know and we'll uh, address it before we move on to day 33 of our, uh, Breath of the Wild playthrough. Cool? Let me see this. Quint, baby. Talking about some Quint. Oh, yo, Fat Pat, I see the uh, whispers, dude, by the way. If you're still hanging out, I appreciate it, dude. I'll take a look at those. Yeah, I'll take a look at those. Standalone Gwent, baby. Yo, uh, Reject, if you didn't know here, let me do this. If anybody hanging out didn't know, our buddy, Bison King here, absolute legend, right? <clears throat> and Mod is a uh, professional... <laughs> Professional standalone Gwent player. Um, plays Gwent every Saturday. Uh, plays, uh, streams it. Streams Gwent every Saturday. Uh, streams other games throughout the week and stuff too uh, in the evening. So you guys should definitely be checking Busy King out. Okay. But uh, especially for you card game lovers, uh, TCGs, di digital TCGs and stuff. Uh, pro player at Gwent, dude. Pro player at Gwent. Go check out Bison King. Show some love. Throw some follows over there, man. He deserves it. He's amazing. Uh, okay, so here's what's funny. You guys can go take a look at uh, yesterday's news segment, and I literally uh, called this out. Yesterday's news segment, we came across an article about how uh, Ubisoft is in some trouble. They haven't been doing well for the past couple of years. Uh, they, yesterday we hit an article about them scrapping about five projects. Um, what is it? Skull and Bones or whatever. What's the name of their new pirate game that's supposed to come out years ago? Uh, Black Flag. What, what, wait, wait, no, no. Black Flag, Assassin's Creed. Is it Skull and Bones? Uh, I think that's the name of it, right? I think so. Uh, we read about this yesterday anyways. And uh, it's getting delayed again. There's, they've got a lot of issues. What I talked about yesterday was the fact that uh, Ubisoft was one of the bigger developers in the industry that was kind of on the auction block last year. After we read that article, I was like, you know, Ubisoft was, was one of the big named developers that uh, had been noted as, as one of the companies that could sell or be uh, acquired last year. And um, I wouldn't be surprised to see them sell this year because they're struggling even more, you know. And here we are, man. I literally called it. We're, uh, we're now having an article today uh, talking about how Ubisoft might be for sale. <laughs> so, uh, you know, they've been having a rough time. We went into a, uh, an in-depth article yesterday about some of the continued issues they're having, if you want to take a look. And uh, here's what we got. Ubisoft for sale. The, uh, 
potentially, question mark. The game's giant is rumored to be actively pursuing acquisition. Yep. Uh, they've been struggling, man, for a while. Despite massive successes in the past, Ubisoft has had a turbulent year. Uh, they haven't been doing great for a few years now. Uh, Ubisoft is seeking an acquisition by a third-party state's industry insider Jeff Grubb. Gaming Bible reports that despite being responsible for some of the biggest names in gaming, such as Far Cry, Assassin's Creed, and Watch Dogs, uh, and Tom Clancy stuff as well, right? The company is hoping that a new parent company will help the company weather its recent downturn. Uh, it's not that they haven't had some decent titles uh, as of recent, but for a company that big, they have not done great. Here's, the, I think, the issue goes. Uh, let me read this, and I'll talk to you about that, okay? This is my take on it anyways. 2022 saw the company struggle financially with their biggest release, Mario plus Rabbit Sparks of Hope, failing to make a major impact. The company is facing a yearly loss of over half a billion dollars, which has led to the cancellation of three unannounced games and yet another delay for the much-anticipated Skull and Bones. Skull and Bones, at this point, we're talking, this is like the sixth delay over the past five years. That is a key indicator that there are significant issues internally to this company, development-wise. Uh, quote, Ubisoft definitely already did the rounds proposing acquisitions and mergers with other similar companies, and it's mostly got laughed at. Wow. It's just too unwieldy. Uh, unwieldy, excuse me. Its strength was its distributed development structure, and now that is an albatross, wrote Grubb on Twitter. I hope it tries to ride it out because I think it might hold on to more people than if it tried to slim down for a, a, a M&A. Either way, uh, though it seems grim, making games is a rough business. Absolutely. Despite the recent turbulence the company has faced, it's worth noting that not all is lost for Ubisoft. The company has two big releases, Assassin's Creed Mirage and Avatar Frontiers of Pandora, scheduled for release this year. The company is no doubt hoping these games can help alleviate the loss. Of course, with the company reportedly seeking a new parent company, one name comes to mind as an obvious prospect, Tencent, the gaming giant out of China, which acquired a 49.9% stake in parent company Gilmo Bros for $300 million in September, with plans to develop mobile titles based on Ubisoft franchises and bring some of the company's titles to China. Given that Tencent has already displayed strong interest in Ubisoft's portfolio, that's the big get there, right? It's not what you would be getting development-wise out of Ubisoft. It's their portfolio. It's, it's their portfolio, and it's those IPs that would come along with it. It's therefore possible that it could acquire the company as it continues its, its expansion overseas. Uh, so here's the deal, Ghost. Uh, Ubisoft is not the, uh, what I'm about to talk about, I've talked about a lot. Ubisoft is not the only developer that seems to have this issue. But they f they seem like they get in a rut of not being able to do very well at creating new unique content. You know what I mean? Uh, do they have... Um, Do they have these, I, I would say that a lot of these companies have been able to sustain and be very successful based on these very, very notorious, successful um, IPs and long running series that uh, they have under their, their name, such as Assassin's Creed, um, Far Cry. Things like that. Or with Square Enix, Final Fantasy. Yeah. Um, but um, there's also an issue, right, where you you look at, at a massive giant developer like Ubisoft, yeah, and you take a look at, at how long they've been trying to get a game out like Black Flag, uh, like, like Skull and Bones, excuse me, Skull and Bones, and it's had... Six delays. The, we're just talking about delays we know about. Six delays over a five-year period from release dates that they had pushed out to us, the public. 
That's not including any kind of internal issues that had pushed them back before they started saying they were going to release the game. Um, there's something wrong, you know? Um, do, are they still able to push out the content that they were always pretty good at making? Yeah. But it seems like they have an issue doing anything outside of that. Bro, they push out AC games like they're candy. And they still do Far Cry. They're doing decent with Far Cry. Uh, you know, a lot of the Tom Clancy stuff, they've got the division. It's not like they're not making content. It's not like they're not making money. But it's not... Uh, and this is one of those things I talk about that I know there are a lot of fans of Assassin's Creed. But I wonder if they would maybe be doing a little bit better if they were able to generate a little bit more hype around Assassin's Creed titles if the industry wasn't so polluted with how fast they're pushing those AC titles out. I'm just talking here. Maybe not. Maybe not. But I just wonder, because last year was the 15th anniversary of Assassin's Creed. I've talked about this before. Last year was the 15th anniversary. They have 12 mainline titles in 15 years. And 17 spinoffs that have been released. It's a lot. And I feel like it's hard to generate a lot of hype in between titles for a series when you're popping them out like pancakes like that, dude. It's just like, boom, boom, you get one, you get one. You, It's just like, just keep going. And I know there's some very good AC titles. But I can tell you just for myself, and I, I don't think I'm the only one, it's hard to look at Assassin's Creed anymore and get psyched about a new one when it seems like, just another AC game in a different setting, a different time, in a different place, but the same old AC, you know? Yeah. Yeah, I think that's what a lot of people, and I know they're not. I know not all of them are that. But that's what a lot of people, I think, get the impression of, Reject. Yeah, I think that's what that's what I'm trying to hit on and, and what you just put in chat. I know that that's not what all of them are. I know that some of them are very unique. And I know that some of the Assassin's Creed titles are very, very good. Um, and there are some people, there's a, there's an amount of the community around uh, Assassin's Creed that are, I mean, they love Assassin's Creed, right? But I think for people that haven't ever taken a dive into it, that's what they see, Right. You look at it and you see all those titles and it's like, it just looks like the same thing with a different kind of skin on it, you know? And it's like, why why would you get hyped about that? I can attest that I've been in that, that same mindset about that series. And uh, I think that's where it, it can be bad for a company when they get into maybe that kind of situation where all they... They, I mean, I don't think it's hard to see Ubisoft. They're huge. So yeah, are they making some different kinds of titles? For sure. But they're, and are, are they right to be focusing on the things that make them uh, the most money? Yeah, because it's a business, right? But is it maybe a bit too much too? I think that's just what I'm trying to get at. Um, whereas maybe they, they could have taken more of a, a, uh, look at trying to get better at making unique titles than pushing out so many Assassin's Creed, building a little bit more hype in between some of these releases or something. Maybe it wouldn't have mattered, but maybe it would have too. At the end of the day, man, they're hurting. You know, and, and uh, I think there's a probably a pretty good chance that they end up selling. Uh, and it's probably going to be Tencent because Tencent already is a big investor for them. Yeah, and look, Ghost, that's what I'm, I'm not saying that they are the same. You know, I'm just saying that uh, I think that people that haven't played the games look at them and it's very polluted. You know what I mean? It's a lot, dude. It's a lot. In a 15-year period for that many titles, and they've got four more in development right now? 15 years? We're talking, what? Well, 
like roughly close to 30 titles in 15 years for Assassin's Creed of both spinoffs and mainline titles, and they got four more in development. That's like two a year almost, dude, average. It's polluted. Again, I understand why they did it, potentially, as a business. It's It, it, it was lucrative. That was their cash cow, right? But uh, was it the best, maybe, strategy for them in the long run from a business standpoint? Maybe not, because of the way this industry works. And yeah, they took the general game into RPG, big change. Yeah, I don't, I'm not, I'm not disagreeing with that. But I think it's hard for people to see the game change whenever there's so many of them. Does that make sense? Busy King got burned out on AC after the EZO trilogy. Came back when Origins was released and played all through Valhalla. Now Phil burned, burned out again. Probably won't play Mirage. Yeah. I know. I haven't played any of them. I remember when Assassin's Creed first came out and I was like, dude, that looks really cool. And then it was like another and another and another and another. And, another, and, another, wow, and they just kept coming. I was like, uh, I'm good. No. I, just, I, I couldn't see the appeal anymore. Uh, it turned me off. But I've heard people, there are people that love, there are certain notable titles out of the uh, series that people are like, do you, you should really play this. You should really play this Assassin's Creed game. It's really, really good. I've had people in this community tell me that, and we should probably give it a shot at some point. I just don't know when I would work it into the schedule right now. But, um, I don't know, that's just my take on it. It's just my take. But I was pretty sure that Ubisoft was going to be one of the front runners for this year uh, to end up getting acquired or, or sold, at least majority-wise. And it looks like I'm not the only one that thinks that way. Uh, them's the breaks, man. That's the news. That's the news. It's always interesting, man. We've had a lot of news here recently. Uh, I think it's just a matter of it being the first of the year. Uh, the news segments have gone long. We've had a lot of good discussions. There's been a lot of stuff popping up uh, going on in the industry. And so I apologize for the new segments being long. Uh, if people aren't necessarily interested in the news as much as us getting into the gaming uh, content, but the, uh, the news is important to me. I love the industry. I love staying current and um, I appreciate everybody being here for it uh, either way, you know? So um, that's, that's the jam lamb Let's get some of that going. Get some of that going. How about that? There we go. Some jams for you. Uh, we're going to move on to the gaming content, man. Day 33 of Breath of the Wild. We're really pushing, uh, just tying up some loose ends and then pushing uh, some Ganondorf stuff. I don't think we'll get to Ganon today, but uh, maybe tomorrow or the 15th. Uh, we'll see. But we're getting there. Uh, happy Flippin' Friday, baby. We want mountain? Oh, you'll get the mountain, dude. You'll get the mountain. All right, uh, it's coming up. It's coming up. You know we'll get Mountain going before we, we hop into Breath of the Wild for sure. Um, you guys rock. I appreciate you very much. Happy Friday. I hope that uh, your Friday is going well, has gone well. Uh, it starts your weekend off right. Okay, baby, the weekend's here. <laughs> the weekend's here. So uh, you guys just keep pushing, baby. You're almost there. Uh, and... We'll be back at it tomorrow, man. Uh, 6 o'clock a.m. CST, same time as always. January 14th edition of Video Gaming News. And then we will do what will be day 34 of Breath of the Wild. Cool. Thank you guys very much for being a part of what we do here. I'm going to create such an amazing place. Stay healthy, stay safe, be kind. And I will catch you guys tomorrow. Cool.